It's time to expand our repertoire of functions in calculus, and uh, these are called the transcendental functions. So, what does that word mean, transcendental, when it comes to mathematics? Well, a transcendental number is a number which is not the root of a polynomial with rational exponents. All right, <laughs> so, for example, if you had a uh, polynomial, um, you know, 2x to the 5th minus 7x cubed, plus one-third x squared minus one equal to zero. All right, I just made this polynomial up. And the coefficients are rational numbers. Now, rational numbers are, are either integers or fractions of integers. So one-third is a rational number. All right, um, and this is a polynomial with rational coefficients, and the roots are what you get when you set equal to zero. All right, so um, those numbers the roots are considered algebraic numbers. I think that's what they're called. I, I might be wrong about that term. But a, a transcendental number is a number which is not the root of a polynomial like this. <laughs> you know? For example, the square root of 2 is not a transcendental number. x squared minus 2 equals to 0. One of the roots is the positive square root of 2. The other one is the negative square root of 2. So, um, Square root of 2 is, a, is not a transcendental number, <laughs> okay? But uh, good examples of transcendental numbers, pi. Pi is a transcendental number, and uh, it, it, it took, it was really difficult to prove this. This was not proven until, I believe, in the 1870s, maybe early 1880s. Um, might have been a guy named Lindemann. It's kind of a little foggy on my memory on this. Uh, pi is a transcendental number. It's not the, the root of a polynomial like that. Uh, e is also transcendental. I think that was not quite as hard to prove as pi was. And, uh, and when you think about it, almost all numbers are transcendental. Uh, the ones that fit polynomials are kind of a little more exceptional. So anyway. Um, now then, so what is a transcendental function? Well, a transcendental function is one that can give you uh, outputs that are transcendental numbers. And so actually the Trigonometric functions are transcendental, and um, but it's it's rather traditional to introduce the you know sine cosine tangent type functions early on in calculus, and then um, and then at some point we have to move into the other kinds of transcendental transcendental functions, and they include the inverse trig functions, the um, the exponential functions like uh, e to the x that's an exponential function. Example of an inverse trig function is the, we read this as the inverse sine of x. Older books might have it as arc sine x, arc sine or inverse sine x. Those are transcendental. Um, exponential functions are transcendental. Logarithmic functions, and we typically use natural log, that's a transcendental function. And we have a new one that uh, you might not have heard of before called hyperbolic. There's a, for example, there's a function called hyperbolic cosine. C-O-S-H, we, we, we just call it cosh. Cosh of x is a, a hyperbolic function. And, and actually, it's, it's a combination of these guys. So um, <laughs> it, it really is an exponential function, but we tend to uh, create these separately. So I'll explain all that when we get to it. All right. Um, so these are types of transcendental functions that uh, we still have to learn about uh, because we use them frequently in calculus and in applications. They show up and uh, all these show up in all kinds of applications. So, all right, well, I'm going to get started. I think I'll pick on the inverse trigonometric functions first.